Hi, this is Julie Harlan. Please visit my website at yourmathcal.com where I organize my videos by topic. A fraction that contains one or more fractions in either its numerator or denominator, denominator or both is called a complex fraction. So below are five examples. The first example, we have 3 fourths over 5 eighths, so it has a fraction in the numerator and a fraction in the denominator. The second one, there's an x alone in the numerator, but in the denominator, there's two terms, 2 minus x over 3, so there's a fraction there. And you can see from the third, fourth, and fifth examples, I have um, fractions in both the numerator and denominator. Complex fractions are not in simplified form. That means we can simplify further, so they don't look complex. And there are two commonly employed methods we could use. And these are um, a quick overview of the two methods. The first method is to write both the numerator and denominator as single terms or fractions. And then you'll multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. The only one in the examples above where you already have the numerator and denominator written as a single term or fraction is the very first one. We have just a single fraction in the numerator, 3 fourths and a single fraction in the denominator, 5 eighths. All of the rest of them are not in that form. If you look at the uh, fourth example, 1 over x minus 2 over x squared in the numerator, there are two fractions in that numerator separated by a subtraction sign. So that's not a single fraction. And in method two, you don't need to have it in the form as the very first example up here. Instead, um, to simplify the complex fraction, the first step would be to multiply the numerator and denominator by the least common multiple of all the denominators of all the fractions in the numerator and the denominator. So here's our next example. When you first look at this, this doesn't even look like a complex fraction, but notice we have negative exponents. So we have to remember what a negative exponent means. And 4 to the negative 1 means 1 over 4 to the first power. So 4 to the negative 1 is just 1 fourth. So if we do that for all of our fractions here, I'm going to have 1 fourth minus 1 sixth, because that's 6 to the negative 1. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. And 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. Now we have a complex fraction. But we have more than a single term in the numerator and denominator. So the easiest method here would be to multiply both the numerator and denominator of the entire complex fraction by the least common multiple. When you do that, all of the fractions in the numerator and denominator will be eliminated. So we have to look at all the denominators. There's a 4, there's a 6, there's a 3 and a 2. And you have to find a common multiple of all those denominators. And I usually pick the least common multiple, but if you pick a bigger one, as long as you reduce it at the end, you'll be okay. So the least common multiple is for 2, 3, 4, and 6 is 12. In other words, that's the smallest number all of those divide into evenly. So I'm going to multiply the whole numerator by 12 and the whole denominator by 12. So we need to do the distributive property, so that's 12. So I'm going to have 12, and I'm going to write it as 12 over 1, but you don't need to do that. 12 over 1 times 1 fourth minus 12 over 1 times 1 sixth over 12 over 1 times 1 third plus 12 over 1 times 1 half. And now using our order of operations, by the way, remember we do the multiplication before subtraction up in the numerator. So now we're going to be able to cancel the denominator will always go into that least common multiple we multiplied by because we chose a multiple of 4. Hence, that's why we multiply by the least common multiple. 6 goes into 12 twice, 3 goes into 12 4 times, and 2 goes into 12 6 times. And in the denominators, really, if you want, you could put, say, all cancel. They will all be 1. So what do I have here in my numerator? I really have 3 times 1, because it's really 3 times 1 over 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 times 1 is 2. In the denominator, 
So 4 times 1 is 4, plus 6 times 1 is 6. So, you know, I simplify the numerator and denominator. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 4 plus 6 is 10, and there's our answer. If you look at the same answer by doing the same problem using method 1, I'm going to do it quickly, and you can see it's not quite as simple. So what I would do again is first I would write these without the negative exponents. But it's not a single fraction in the numerator and denominator, so you'd have to get common denominator in the numerator, common denominator in the denominator, so that you can subtract and add those fractions. So the common denominator is 12 in the numerator. I need to multiply this 1 fourth by 3 over 3, 1 sixth by 2 over 2, 1 third by... Now, I can make this 6 or 12. I'm going to make it 6, 2 over 2, and 3 over 3, because in the denominator, the least common denominator is 6. So what does that give me in the numerator? It gives me 3 twelfths minus 2 twelfths. In the denominator, it gives me 2 sixths minus 3 sixths. So I have to do all that to get a single fraction. 1 twelfth over, let's see, is this is supposed to be a plus sign here, over 5 sixths. And now you have a single fraction over a single fraction. That's when method 1 is the easiest. You take 1 twelfth divided by 5 sixths, and that's the same thing as 1 twelfth times 6 deaths. And then we could reduce. And notice you both get the same answer. So you can use method one or method two, but the preferred method for most people would be method one because you eliminate all the fractions quicker. Okay?